Hello and welcome to Business on the Wire. I'm Mitali Mukherjee. In a scathing indictment of the central government's handling of the vaccine policy and availability of vaccines, the Supreme Court on Wednesday put out an extremely strongly worded statement. They asked the centre to disclose how the sum of 35,000 crores, which was allocated at the time of the budget towards this entire vaccination plan, had been spent. In a detailed and sharply critical statement, the Supreme Court also asked for a step-by-step -step breakdown on many key accounts, including what's happened with pricing, what's happened with rollout, and what might happen in terms of availability of vaccines till the end of this year. The sharpest comment on the state of affairs in terms of the vaccine policy or the MIS policy as it has been in many ways up until now was this particular statement from the Apex Court. The court wrote, courts cannot be silent spectators when constitutional rights of citizens are infringed by executive policies. This was, of course, a statement put out by a three-member bench, Justices D.Y. Chandrachur, Ellen Rao and S. Ravindra Bhatt. For more on what the next step might be from the central government's point of view and what this kind of observation points to from the Supreme Court. Joining me is Vikas Singh. He's former additional Solicitor General of India and the President of the Supreme Court Bar Association. Thank you, Mr. Singh, for joining in and speaking with me. Uh, I'd like to start, if possible, with you know your takeaway from yesterday's Supreme Court observation. What's your broad takeaway from it? And then, of course, we'll get into every specific point that they made. Yeah, so the Supreme Court actually is, uh, according to me, a little upset because in its earlier order, you know, it had made some very scathing remarks with regard to the policy of the government. And in Supreme Court had expected that the government will file a proper affidavit explaining. And unfortunately, that has not been done. So the government has uh, given very, very weird, you know, uh, justifications for uh, what they are doing. Now, just look at this scenario. And basically, we are talking of vaccine because vaccine is the one which the government is, the court is really upset with. Vaccination in this country has always been, these are, these are communicable diseases. So this can't be, you know, state specific. If there is movement within states, it will go from one state to it's concurrent. Yeah. So vaccination in this country, right from the independence, has been done for all these kind of communicable diseases, has been done under the universal immunization program. And always it has been done by the center. And if you look at the constitution also, under list three, concurrent list, if the center takes over something, then the states are completely precluded from, you know, sort of getting into that subject. Now the center has taken over this vaccination program. They say, no, no, but we'll take over only with regard to plus 45. We'll not take over with the 45. Now, where is this justification? You, I can understand that when you do a vaccination, you can do a priority of vaccinating certain population first, like the frontline workers or the health uh, workers or the, you know, the police personnel or whatever whom you consider to be more vulnerable. But that can't uh, justify that I'll do this and not the rest. I mean, they're all citizens of this country and everybody is to be protected by the central government. The central government can't say that we'll do this part and the rest will leave it to the states. That is one. The other more objectionable part is that when you deal with a vaccine manufacturer and you are determining the price with the manufacturer, then why don't you determine a uniform price for the entire country? Why have three prices? I'll give you a very uh, interesting example. I'm appearing for the state of West Bengal in the Supreme Court. Now, West Bengal has placed orders with the Serum Institute. Now, as the pricing determined by the central government, the 18 to 44 have to be vaccinated 50% by the private sector and 50% by the state government. The price is 300 for the private sector for the state government and 600 for the private sector. Now, the West Bengal has said on affidavit that I am asking for vaccines, not a single dose has been given, but private hospitals are, uh, you know, vaccinating, uh, uh, they have sufficient doses with them. Now, how do you justify that? Because the manufacturer has a higher price to get from the private sector, it will obviously be their priority to give them first. Uh, you know, vaccination is also, you know, in terms of time. You can't have a, you, you'll say 50% to state government, 50% to private sector. Now the 50% to the state government can always be delayed. 
on some pretext or the other. For instance, advance payment. Now, state governments have difficulty in advance payment. So you will try to take the 600 rupee payment first. And these private companies are, are, are flush with fund. They will be actually addressing the, uh, the elite, so to say, and the people, you know, who have uh, the, uh, the deep pockets. So they, they will be charging, they'll be paying 600, they'll be charging 1200 or 1500 for vaccination. And they will have a line for doing that and there'll be no problem. But what kind of uh, percentage of uh, population are we talking about? And how do you justify that 50% of any state is according to you, you know, uh, um, having affordable, uh, can take affordable vaccine from the private hospitals and the rest 50%. Where do you get this 50% from? Mm. So, and how do you ensure that the marginalized, I mean, you, you have, th this whole thing has to be done uh, on the COVID platform. Now, there is a huge digital divide in this country. How do you ensure that the marginalized, the farmers, the people living in the, um, you know, um, the slums, Jugi Chopris and uh, villages, how will they get into? I, I, I've been trying for my staff, you know, to get them uh, registered under the COVID platform. And I've been unsuccessful in the last four weeks. So if I can't get it, uh, with all my support staff and everything, how do you expect a, a farmer or a, a villager or a person living in a Jugi to register himself on the COVID platform and, and then get it vaccinated? So these are some very, very, uh, you know, telling questions. And I, I don't understand why somebody has not even applied common sense to decide a policy. So the central government uh, decision is, according to me, very, very, um, uh, you know, sort of completely um, uh, undefendable. Since you are representing the West Bengal government, sir, let me ask you this, because there is a narrative being built that it was the states that had gone to the in, in the first place to the center saying, let us buy on our own. Whereas uh, the contra view to that seems to be the states asked for independence in terms of how they allocate the vaccines, but not in terms of purchasing the vaccine. Would you like to, you know, clear this for uh, for anyone who's watching? Because these these two views seem to be clashing with each other in, in the larger media and the construct seems to be well earlier the states asked to buy it themselves and now they're saying they can't buy it well this is also another fantastic argument that they have done i'm glad you asked me this question the states do you think that the states have a choice in not vaccinating their people if the center you know brings in a policy where they say 50 percent this 50 percent that and uh, this price and that price does any state government have a choice in in saying that i will not vaccinate the justification that they are giving for a dual price or for a higher price for the state is and this this is absurd according to me is that the states are ready to vaccinate for free their people, so the dual price is justified. So can you understand? Will it? Will it? Even a even a student of a you know fifth class will will appreciate that this is absurd. I mean, just because states are ready to vaccinate their people for free, you justify a dual price saying that let them pay three hundred and I'll pay only uh, one fifty. I mean, that's the kind of logic there. Number one, number two, when the states are saying that we are ready to vaccinate. It's out of desperation because the center has not rolled out any policy for below 44. If the center were to just extend the earlier policy of vaccinating below 44, also the way they have done plus four. Mind you, even plus 45 has not been vaccinated by the center. It has been vaccinated by the state only. The infrastructure of the state has been used for vaccinating even plus 45. If you had to, and again, the same infrastructure will be used for vaccinating the below 45. So if the center had just like they have relaxed from, if you recall, initially it was 60 plus, then they brought it to 45. Then they brought it to 18 to 44. And in the 18 to 44, surprisingly, they brought in this three triple pricing and in the state government and the central government and the private sector, etc. Now, if they had just gone the same manner as they had done for above 60, to below 45 and then to below, sorry, below 60 to 45 and then below 45. If they had done the just the same manner, states would not have any objections. States would not have even said, open their mouths. They're forced to open their mouths to say that, please say, give me vaccines. I'm ready to pay because they have to protect their citizens. So it's a very, very absurd kind of a logic which is being given by the central government in justifying that there is a dual price and states are you know willing to 
pay for the uh, extra price uh, for the vaccine and accordingly dual pricing or tri uh, three 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 layer pricing is justified uh, aside from uh, you know the dual pricing issue the observations yesterday sir seem to raise very serious questions about money allocation so far i mean the last union budget saw 35000 crores being allocated as you said even if it is 50% for the center i mean ultimately the center is a mythical creature right <laughs> who are they helping they are helping citizens of states uh, you know why is it that there has been a lack of clarity in terms of where this money has gone what was paid to which manufacturer and how much we have in terms of supply right now or even supply runway till the end of december well that's another very important question you raised and this i have been saying on several channels i have also argued in supreme court the budget that they have provided for is 35000 crore now 35000 crore was provided for the on the assumption or the estimation that is because that budget was provided when the prices were still not known of at what price center will be buying vaccines so the assumption was that they'll get each dose at 350 rupees so two doses 700 rupees so 35000 crore will be good enough to vaccinate 50 crore people now when we are talking of the um, um, uh, population which is above um, uh, 18 in the country it is somewhere around 94 95 crore so this 35000 crore as per their estimation was supposed to vaccinate only 50000 50 50 crore people but they got it at 150 so the per uh, person cost for vaccinated is 300 now if you translate 300 into 35000 crore you are budgeting for 116.6 crore people now 116.6 crore people don't even need to be vaccinated vaccinated because you only want to vaccinate 94 or, or not crore which are above 80 so you have already budgeted for far more number of people than you need to vaccinate that is one part now the second part is that on the 6th of april and i'm i'm on serum institute only on the 6th of april punawala in an interview to uh, 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 vishnu som of ndtv had said that even at 150 he is making profit now again it is common sense and it is completely you know defying all all logic he defies it by saying because the numbers are large i make profit at even 150 now please appreciate i mean you are you are a uh, you know a business channel if the number is say 50 crore you are making profit if the number becomes 100 crore you'll make more profit at 150 rupees so i i don't understand if he's saying he's making profit because the numbers are large if you make the numbers larger by the central government you know procuring the entire vaccine for the country profit will be even more because your 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 whole justification for profitability is the large numbers so if the central government has budgeted for 116 crore people and the rate at 150 is profitable if you buy for 50 crore obviously if you buy for 94 crore it will be more profitable to the private company so i don't understand who is advising them who is you know doing the common sense uh, um, uh, you know um, reasoning for them and that is why supreme court is not able to understand what is the justification for the center not doing the entire vaccination itself under its universal vaccinization program immunization program which has been done for the last 73 years in this country and suddenly start a new system which is completely now i'll give you one more very interesting number 35000 crore is good enough to vaccinate 116 crore now if you take away 59 crore to be vaccinated at 300 and 600 so the normal price the government is 150 and if you take state government price is 300 and for the private sector price is 600 yeah. now when you translate 59 crore divided by 2 so 29 and a half into 29 29 and a half crore as per the assumption of the central government will be vaccinated at 300 300 rupees per dose and 29 and a half crore which is that 18 to 44 uh, age group will be vaccinated at 600 per dose now if you see the differential that you are paying to the private 
directly to these vaccine manufacturers. Differential, I'm not talking about the, the actual expenditure. So if, if 150 is a, is a price at which they are making profit, if they sell 29.5 crore at uh, 300 per dose, so that means 600 per person, as against 300 per person, which the central government is buying, vis-a-vis 29.5 crore at 1,200 persons, we say vis-a-vis 300 at which the central government is buying. The differential amount that you are paying to these vaccine companies is 36,000 crores. Now, why do you, how do you justify a 36,000 crore extra payout when the manufacturer is saying that he'll make profit even at uh, 150? Now, lastly, you have taken a stand at the WTO that there should be no patent as far as uh, uh, any COVID drug or COVID vaccine is concerned. South Africa supported you. The US also reluctantly supported you. There you are taking a stand that there should, everybody should be allowed to manufacture any drug which is to be used for COVID or any vaccine which is to be used for COVID. But in India, surprisingly, you say in the Supreme Court, no, 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 we can't allow people to ma manufacture vaccine in India because for some unknown reason, it will upset our negotiation. Now, what negotiation are they talking about? Are they talking about that extra 36,000 crore payout which will go to these vaccine manufacturers for supplying these vaccines at double and four times the price? I, I don't understand. I get, again, it's bereft of any logic. I mean, any affidavit should have some logical you know, uh, answer. There is no answer. In fact, it, it raises more questions than, than it answers uh, the court. So that's that. those are the very startling facts which uh, I think the country should know. First on the point of manufacturers, though, Mr. Singh, it's not just Covishield. I mean, you also have Covaxin that is now marked up, uh, you know, far greater than what the original price was intended to be. Sputnik V will hit the market and that will be sold at close to 1,200 rupees a dose. Uh, given the observations from the Apex Court yesterday, what do you think the consequences might be for manufacturers who were probably till this point taking advantage of the fact that they were working in a monopolistic or duopolistic situation and really had a lot of control over what you know what they were what they were dictating in terms of pricing so uh, if you ask me the uh, there is no worry for the manufacturers because for the manufacturers the central government is doing their betting so they don't have to bother also to you know even represent themselves in court because they, they, their uh, 36,000 ad additional payout to them is virtually being given to them on a platter by the central government for, you know, uh, by fixing this uh, uh, three price uh, formula of uh, um, uh, about uh, 40 crore being uh, vaccinated at 150 rupees and 29.5 crore being vaccinated at 300 rupees and another 25.5 crore being vaccinated at 600 rupees. So really speaking, I don't see any worry for them. The real problem or the real issue, if you ask me, is this, that they may, the moment they exercise uh, the power of the central government under Section 92, patent act, and that power has been conferred only for this kind of a scenario. It is not conferred for any other scenario. It's a very special power which the central government can exercise in extreme and grave circumstances. If today they were to exercise that power and make available this very vaccine for being manufactured by anybody who doesn't even hold a patent of this vaccine, you will get a lot of people wanting to probably supply you at less than 150 rupees. But you're not wanting to do that for some unknown reason. I mean, your unknown reason is obvious, obvious uh, that you're wanting the, the vaccine manufacturers to take a windfall profit. So if you were to exercise that, there would be, I'm sure. So the, again, the justification they give is we don't have raw material sufficient to you know, allow more manufacturers to come in. Now, who has, who has complained that there is no raw material? Has the central government, is the central government doing the purchasing for the vaccine companies as well? I mean, how, how do they prejudge this issue without exercising their power under Section 82 of opening up vaccine manufacture to anybody who wants to manufacture this vaccine? I don't know if, if, they, if, they, if, if a vaccine manufacturer who's more, uh, you know, sort of... Uh, uh, I would say, um, uh, resourceful. He may get his own uh, uh, source of, uh, you know, uh, getting his um, uh, uh, raw materials. So unless you open it up, 
how do you know whether there will be people ready to do this or not so i don't understand again uh, uh, and and this is completely contrary to the stand that you've taken at the wto so, uh, the whole thing is is in a huge mess if you ask me and and the government is completely without any justification and in fact it is doing the batting on behalf of the vaccine companies in supreme court brazenly uh, two more points that that stood out mr singh and i'd like your thoughts on that one the kind of data that the supreme court asked for you know quantity of vaccines projected date of supply it almost looked like the supreme court was now conducting an audit on what was going on with the vaccine policy and secondly their very sharp remarks on the rural urban divide uh, that you know that has really come to the fore with this app which forget about rural but many people even in urban india can have not been able to you know steer through uh, who do you think is going to conduct the audit for the first part of my question and secondly do you think they will now need to dismantle this uh, routing of applications through the app they are going to have to you know make this more universalized they are going to have to do more in terms of on the spot registration well the way the central government is arguing their matter supreme court they appear to be quite defiant and they got an a, a one month window because justice chandrachud fell ill and the matter had to be adjourned but uh, i don't see the central government relating at all and what i see is that the supreme court will ultimately have to pass judgment because ultimately you see whenever a policy is designed it has to pass the muster of article 14 or the constitutional muster now if it is arbitrary it is clearly violative of article 14 so the way they are you know going on i don't know who's um, you know deciding uh, this policy for the central government so far the whole thing will have to be struck down and the court will have to decide uh, how uh, things have to be rolled out now when you ask me this question of this digital divide and the rural areas etc and whether this app will be given up or not you know there's a very interesting issue which arose when i was appearing in the patna high court Uh, defending the state of bihar uh, before the high court uh, with regard to the spread of uh, covid in bihar you know the the argument that i made and which i am making here in the in supreme court as well that it is easy to you know uh, send vaccines to the villages rather than create icu beds in the villages now today we've had a second wave and i'm telling you i'm i'm very 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 upset that i lost about i'm the president of the supreme court bar more than 100 lawyers i lost you know and and young and you know very uh, uh, without co morbidities in this uh, uh, second covid wave now the second covid wave fortunately looks like getting you know arrested but if there were a third wave <clears throat> and if the third wave were to go into the villages just imagine what the situation will be where there is no hospital bed and especially in a state like bihar you know which is uh, a little more um, um, you know under developed than the other states so no hospital bed there is hardly any primary health center for for the purpose of you know people going for medical care if people start falling sick in the villages what is going to it's going to devastate this country so the only way to do this is instead of you know uh, putting this digital divide is to take these vaccines on the on the on the van and move with the van and go and vaccinate in the villages and and you can target the of course whatever is according to your priority do the plus 45 first and 18 to 45 later or whatever you want to do comorbidities first that's the only way to save this country now that that if it's not there nobody is bothered i they say no no but these villages can go to some gram panchayat and register themselves i i am not able to register for the last four weeks for my staff what villages will be able to go to which gram panchayat and get themselves registered so it's a it's a very serious problem i don't understand why the central government in spite of you know having uh, um, uh, faced the second wave without any preparation and uh, um, still are is not taking it seriously that there could be a third wave which could be even more serious and more devastating than the second hmm. uh the center has been given a couple of weeks to respond to you know all the observations of the court uh, sir what do you think the states will now do i mean you're representing west bengal but it seems like the the every state turn by turn will have no option but to approach the supreme court for some kind of direction on you know how centralized procurement can be done how distribution can be done is that what you foresee happening that states will have to move court for relief so, so i'll 
so i'll tell you it's a it's a very very uh, uh, you know uh, unique problem here which is a problem progressing by the day and one has to live by the day in this covid situation now unfortunately supreme court as it is we we lost one month because of justice chandrachud getting sick again the central government has asked for two weeks so again it has gone to 30th of june so another one month now in this one month time do you think any state government can wait for the supreme court to decide at what price etc and then then uh, vaccinate its people so the the situation is such that because of uh, the way things are and the way uh, you know judiciary uh, takes up matters and the way you know the um, judicial dispensation has its own uh, problem of um, time lag in deciding because you have to allow affidavits today today supreme court has not even heard any state government because they don't have time they have been able to you know give a two hour hearing only but fortunately they try and capture most of these issues in their orders by the time the next hearing happened most of the states would have already given their checks to these manufacturers vaccine manufacturers at 300 rupees and bought whatever they can buy for the time being so i don't know when they will be able to uh, you know bring in a final judgment and and give a quietus to the matter whether the payment which has already been made at 300 rupees will be adjusted for the purpose of you know if if the supreme court were to take the view that it should be 150 for everybody then the next vaccine uh, roll out uh, could be done in that same price these are all lot of you know uncertainties which uh, uh, to some extent will work to the detriment of the states by virtue of this passage of time and uh, uh, i don't know whether supreme court can reverse the clock and give some relief for whatever the states have done in the meantime uh, so as to give them some relief uh, as far as the financial uh, aspect is concerned and uh, also ensure that uh, the universal vaccination is done at the earliest so it, it, there are a lot of uncertainty as far as this is concerned today just one final question uh, mr singh there were so many you know uh, sharp observations in the court uh, from the court yesterday but one line stood out where they said that courts cannot be silent spectators when constitutional rights of citizens are infringed by executive policies uh, the tone and tenor seems very different from what we've been hearing for many months now from the supreme court but does it look like uh, again there is a sharp difference of opinion between executive and judiciary and they are now you know locking horns on uh, different different points of view over different points of view well uh, if i were to analyze the order of the supreme court I, my analysis would be that they are trying to tell that look here we don't want to interfere in your policy it is you to have you to get it right for yourself but at the same time if you don't get it right we'll have no choice but to do it so basically it's more in the form of you know trying to the central government in the right direction hoping that somebody will you know give them this logic probably what i am saying in your channel if somebody were to see some logic will come on them so basically uh, it's it's a very very balanced order in that sense of not taking over the governmental functioning straight away and telling them that these are the uh, lacuna in the policy so far and which needs to be addressed immediately but ultimately if they don't do it if they don't address the policy then they will have to take some strong measures which will be pushing the policy and determining how exactly things should uh, be done uh, for the purpose of uh, saving this country from this pandemic so i i i hope that that day doesn't come because it is i'm i'm also very uh, strong you know sort of uh, um, um, proponent of the of the uh, separation of power a um, uh, uh, concept and i don't feel i don't agree that the supreme court should get it to governmental functioning but if the government doesn't give it a choice probably it may have to so i hope uh, they are able to look you know uh, look at the writing at the wall and and correct their policy suitably thank Fantastic you fantastic speaking with you thank you so much for joining in mr singh and uh, giving me all these valid and valuable inputs on the yesterday's observation thank you again To receive instant updates on all videos from the wire click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon pay to support independent journalism click the link in the description and choose the amount you want to pay